today's homily I want to do in a vlog format. And the reason is because the issues that are going on in today's readings are issues that affect us at a deep personal level in our relationships with others. And my experience is the issues that are touched upon here, I deal with more than any other issues in ministry. First of all, let's talk about what's going on. We see in the first reading from Ezekiel that what happens is God is holding Ezekiel responsible for preaching the word. And it seems kind of harsh if you look at it. God says to Ezekiel, if you preach and people do not listen to you and they are, then they die, then I'm not going to hold you responsible. But if you don't preach and therefore people don't hear what they should do and they die, I will hold you responsible. And you go, oh, that's, that's pretty harsh. Well, actually, is it? That same principle is the principle upon which our entire tort system is based. If you inform people about the safe, proper use of a product that you may be selling or you have made, and they misuse it, and you tell them not to misuse it, and you tell them how, and they misuse it, and they get hurt, you are not responsible. But if you don't tell them, you are responsible. That's the reason why here in the United States we have such things as the warning um, at the warning sign or the warning message before you fold up a baby carriage, make sure you remove the baby. Because if you were to accidentally, and who would do this, but people do, fold up the baby carriage with the baby in there, you are responsible for not telling people that it doesn't work that way. And that's, that's the way our tort system is. It's the exact same principle. But there's something else here that's important that we see in Ezekiel that we see yet again in the Gospel, and that is that there are people, no matter who is speaking, no matter what you say, aren't going to listen. And we have to accept that. Now, Jesus talks about this when he talks about the people who are not listening, there's nothing you can do, they're doing something wrong, you try to tell them you, you shouldn't be doing this, whatever the case may be, they don't listen to you, they don't listen to anyone else, they don't listen to the church, they don't listen to whomever. Jesus says there's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Now I deal with this a lot because you'd be surprised how many people and how many families have that one relative who refuses to talk to them. And I get that question a lot. And what I will tell them is, you know, they'll say, you know, it's been 10 years and whoever it is, my aunt, my cousin, my brother, my whatever the case may be, refuses to talk to me. And <clears throat> I explain to them, I says, have you made it clear with that person that, that you are willing to talk, that you're willing to reconcile, whatever the case may be? And they'll go, yes, but they don't want anything to do with me. Well, I explain to them, your door is open, but their door is shut. There's nothing you can do about it, but it's also not your responsibility. They've made a decision. They don't want to talk to you. They want nothing to do with you. Their door is shut. It's on them. It's not on you. You've done everything you can, but there are people that will keep that door shut. And there is nothing we can do about it. So when we look at that within the context of what Jesus is teaching at, we also see that within the context of our Christian life. There are people in the community that are going to do what they want, and there's nothing you can do to stop that. Uh, you can tell them, A, you can have the church tell them, whatever the case may be, and they're going to say, I'm going to do it no matter what. What are you going to do? We don't have liturgy police or whatever the case walking around. There isn't much, and Jesus says, just let it go. The, one of the reasons why we need to let it go is if you keep pursuing it, it's just going to eat you up. He says, just let it go. But... It also brings out a really important point that we need to understand. If you go around YouTube and you listen to some of the atheists, especially the ex-Catholic atheists, you will see that they have within themselves learned a very common but bad teaching. And the teaching, which is a misunderstanding of Catholic teaching, is that there are certain sins that if you commit them, you will end up in hell. 
Now, that may sound like, well, isn't that what they taught us? Well, no, you have to understand the deeper message. Actually, that's not true. There is only one sin that you can commit that can lead you into hell, and it's the one that Jesus talks about today. Now, a lot of people say, well, isn't that the unforgivable sin, and that's something totally different. No, that's exactly what it is. The unforgivable sin is not saying anywhere, including on YouTube, that you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That is not the unforgivable sin. As a matter of fact, there are people that would never say those words that do commit the unforgivable sin. And what is it? It's refusing to be forgiven. It's saying, I'm going to do things my way, and I don't care what you're teaching about God, what you're teaching whatever, I'm going to do things the way I feel they should be done, and don't bother me, leave me alone. And many of those people, unlike what you may see in the Blasphemy Challenge, actually go to church. So you need to understand that. So you, you can name all the sins in the world, but when we repent of those sins, whatever the case may be, God forgives us. But the one sin that God cannot forgive us for is what is known as obstinacy of heart. It's refusing to be forgiven, refusing to recognize that what we're doing is a sin, refusing to uh, open ourselves to the grace of God, doing things my way, so to speak. That's the essential um, sin that will lead you into hell, and that is really the only sin, because you can repent of all sins, but you can't repent of a sin where you refuse to repent. repent. That's just an oxymoron. And so that's the real one sin. And Jesus says, you know, as much as it's the will of his Father that all are saved, as much as it's the will of ourselves that all are saved, there are people that no matter what you do, do not care, do not want to hear it, and want nothing to do with you, and you just have to accept that. Uh, it's not really a positive message in a sense. It's Jesus speaking on a very real basis, which is the reason why I did this in this format. It's just simple. That's the way it is. P certain people could care less. And there's nothing you can do about that. So being aware of that, remember that message. You know, our call is to lead people to repentance. Our call is to lead people to know Christ and let them know that no matter what sin they have committed, and there's plenty of people walking around saying, God can never love me because I've committed a terrible sin. There are plenty of people walking around doing that, and you can turn around and say, that's not true. It's the people who say, get out of my face, leave me alone. And again, some of them may go to church. Some of them may turn around and say, I don't care what you teach as Catholic teaching. I'm going to do it my way. Get out of my face. Leave me alone. That, Jesus says, nothing we can do about that. God bless you.